Hello and welcome to the Commander's Quarters, your Magic the Gathering source that helps you command your budget. This show and episodes like this one are possible thanks to viewers like you. If you're looking for an easy way to help support this show, make sure that you like, share, and subscribe. Also, hit that bell notification icon so you don't miss any new episodes. You can also go check out our playmats and other merchandise at thecommandersquarters.com. We also have a ton of brand new t-shirt designs in stock, so make sure you check out those as well. Another easy way to support this show is with our TCG Player affiliate links. So whether you're buying a deck or individual cards, you can use this general link right here or one in the description. And the final way that you can support this show is by supporting us directly by becoming a patron. There are many benefits to being a patron, and I truly couldn't do this without all their support. There's even a brand new Brigadier General tier where you can get a shout out on a Commander's Quarters episode that's dedicated to you. Hey everyone, Mitch coming in for the Commander's Quarters studio. Welcome to the show. Today's episode comes to you courtesy of Caleb, who's been supporting this channel as a general tier patron. I truly couldn't do this without the support from amazing patrons like Caleb, so again, Caleb, thank you so much. And actually, for today's episode, Caleb's gonna handle the intro for me. Hey Mitch and the rest of the Commander's Quarters gang out there. I hope you all like this one. I'd like to see you build around Crav the Unredeemable and Regna the Redeemer. I've been toying around with the deck myself, but I'd love to see your take on the Sacrifice and Life Gain power couple. So, as Caleb said, today's deck is going to be a partner deck built around Crab and Regna. Crab the Unredeemed is a 3-3 demon that costs 4 and a black, and it's going to partner with Regna the Redeemer. Obviously. By paying a black, you can sacrifice X creatures and target player draws X cards and gains X life, then you put X plus one counters on Crab the Unredeemed. We'll go more in depth into this ability, but first let's talk about Regna the Redeemer, a 4-4 angel that obviously partners with Crab, and she's got flying and she costs 5 in white. She has at the beginning of each end step, if your team gain life this turn, create two 1-1 one, one white warrior creature tokens. So, Crab works on sacrificing creatures to draw you cards and gain you life, and Regna gives you creatures when you gain life. So, yeah, these commanders work very well together as a partner power couple. Crab's sacrifice ability is especially potent because even though it isn't a free sacrifice outlet, it is an outlet that allows you to just sacrifice as many creatures as you want to for just one mana each time. So for just one mana, you can sacrifice a ton of creatures, gain a lot of life, draw a lot of cards, and then if Regna's in play as well at the beginning of your end step, you're going to get two more creatures that you can sacrifice later. So Regna can keep feeding Crab, and yeah, that is an incredibly powerful sacrifice outlet to have. So with this deck, we're going to get a ton of tokens in play, sacrifice a bunch of creatures, gain a bunch of life, draw a ton of cards, and win in some exciting ways. And one more thing before we jump into the cards for this deck, every single card in the deck outside of these commanders is less than $1. And now with all that said, let's jump into it. First up, we've got some fantastic repeatable token generators with cards like Dreadhorde Invasion, Jadar Gokalar of Nefalia, and Ameria Angel. Dreadhorde Invasion says at the beginning of your upkeep, you lose one life and amass one. So again, amass is basically, hey, you get a zombie army, or you get a counter on a zombie army if you already have one. But obviously with Kraven play, we can just sacrifice our zombies to ensure that we just keep getting more and more zombie tokens. And speaking of zombie tokens, Jadargo Collar of Nefalia has, at the beginning of your end step, if you control no creatures with Decayed, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token with Decayed. So again, much like Dreadhorde Invasion, our commander being a sacrifice outlet very much comes in handy. We can ensure that those tokens are being utilized to draw cards and gain life instead of just not getting those tokens at all. And then we can get tokens in a different way with Ameria Angel. She's a 3-3 flyer that has landfall. Whenever land enters the battlefield under your control, you may create a 1-1 white bird creature token with flying. But next up, let's move on and talk about cards like Regal Bloodlord, Griffin Airy, and Thalese Reverent Medium. Regal Bloodlord says, at the beginning of each end step, if you gain life this turn, create a 1-1 black bag creature token with flying. So if we're set up properly, this can actually get us four creatures every trip around the table. But we can also get a bigger creature with Griffin Airy. It says at the beginning of your end step, if you gain three or more life this turn, create a 2-2 white Griffin creature token with flying. So by utilizing Krav to sacrifice three creatures to draw three cards and gain three life, we get a 2-2 Griffin. But then Thalese Reverent Medium can give us a ton of creature tokens. It says at the beginning of each end step, create X-1-1 white spirit creature token with flying, where X is the number of tokens you created this turn. So she can essentially double up the amount of tokens that we make in a turn. Moving on though, next up there's Hidden Stockpile, which says at the beginning of your end step, if a permanent you control left the battlefield this turn, create a 1-1 one -one color servo artifact creature token. So again, an additional value for us for actually sacrificing creatures. And speaking of additional value, Goalish Procession says whenever one or more non-token creatures die, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token with Decayed, this ability triggers only once each turn. So keep in mind this counts when any non-token creature dies, including our opponent's creatures. Though it is limited to just once each turn. 
But cards that don't have that same limit are ones like Open the Graves, Blight Mound, and Ogre Slumlord. Open the Graves says whenever a non-token creature you control dies, create a 2-2 black zombie creature token. Blight Mound is somewhat similar. It says attacking pests you control get plus 1 plus 0 and have menace, and whenever a non-token creature you control dies, create a 1-1 one, one black and green pest creature token with when this creature dies you gain 1 life. So this is giving us somewhat smaller creatures, though they are going to be 2 ones and have menace while this is in play, and on top of that when those creatures die we gain more life. But then there's Ogre Slumlord, which takes things to a whole nother level. It says, whenever another non-token creature dies, you may create a 1-1 Black Rat creature token in Rats you control of Death Touch. So this counts when any non-token creature dies, not just our own, and unlike Ghoulish Procession, there is no one time a turn limit. And again, on top of that, it gives our rats Death Touch, so yeah, Ogre Slumlord does a lot of work. But even though it's a fantastic card in this deck, it's still not quite as good as the Golden Pig of this deck, which is the number one card out of her 99. And the golden pig for this deck is Requiem Angel. Requiem Angel is a 5-5 flying angel for 5 and a white. She has, whenever another non-spirit creature you control dies, put a 1-1 white spirit creature token with flying onto the battlefield. So obviously, and most notably, Requiem Angel does not care if the creature that dies is a token or non-token creature. So when we go to sacrifice a ton of tokens, which is going to happen a lot with this deck, we essentially just get to replace them all. Well, okay, as long as they're not a spirit. And again, a lot of the creature tokens that we're going to be making are not spirits. I mean, we've talked about zombies, birds, we've talked about bats, griffins. Okay, one of them was a spirit. And then servos, and more zombies, and pests even, and rats. But yeah, most of these are not spirits, so we essentially just double up on all of our tokens. So yeah, Requiem Angel can give us an absurd amount of value throughout the game, and that's what makes it the Golden Pig. And actually, now that I, of course I've said that there aren't many spirit tokens in the deck, of course the next card that I'm going to talk about is a spirit token maker with Lingering Souls, but come on, there aren't that many cards in this deck that actually make spirit creature tokens. Regardless, Lingering Souls is going to give us two 1-1 one, one spirits with flying, and we can flash it back for one and a black. And then Increasing Devotion is going to give us five human creature tokens, and ten if we flash it back. And then Decree of Justice can either give us angels if we pay its actual cost, or if we cycle it and pay X, we can make soldiers. Regardless, aside from all these fantastic token makers, perhaps the best creature fodder in the deck, though, is Reassembling Skeleton. It's a 1-1 Skeleton Warrior that has pay 1 and a black, return it from your graveyard to the battlefield tapped. So this is a fantastic piece of repeatable creature fodder. We can keep getting it back out to sacrifice it for value not only from our commander, but also from all those death triggers that we have, too. And then we can get it back out new again, and again, and again. Regardless, we're nowhere near done with talking about generating value just yet. So when it comes to additional card advantage, you know on top of our commander, which is a card advantage engine, we're also going to be running things like Mentor of the Meek, Flesh Taker, and Shadows of the Past. Mentor of the Meek says whenever the creature with power 2 or less enters the battlefield under control, you may pay 1 if you do draw a card. A ton of creatures, and especially creature tokens in this deck, have a very small amount of power, so yeah, they meet that requirement. And then Flesh Taker says, whenever you sacrifice another creature, you gain one life and scry one. Speaking of which, Shadows of the Past says, whenever a creature dies, scry one, so yeah, this one counts our opponent's creatures as well. And while scrying isn't card advantage, it is fantastic card selection. But when it comes to drawing a ton of cards at once, let's talk about Liliana's Standard Bearer. It has Flash, and when it enters the battlefield, you draw X cards for X the number of creatures that died under your control this turn. Next up, there's Morbid Opportunist, which says, whenever one or more other creatures die, draw a card, this ability triggers only once each turn. So if we can sacrifice a creature on every single turn, we're going to be getting some extra value out of this. Speaking of which, there's Smothering Abomination, which says the beginning of your upkeep, sacrifice a creature, and whenever you sacrifice a creature, draw a card. That's going to be an absurd amount of cards drawn throughout the game. Of course, we also have some other more standard draw spells in this deck as well, with cards like Sign and Blood, Ancient Craving, Read the Bones, Promise of Power, and Ambition's Cost. But now that we've talked about drawing even more cards, what cards are we hoping to draw into? Well, first up, let's talk about some cards that can pack a really big punch with Falconrath Noble, Corpse Knight, and even Pious Evangel. Falconrath Noble says, whenever it and another creature dies, target player loses one life, and you gain one life. So when we're sacrificing our creatures in mass, we can drain an opponent for a ton. And then Corpse Knight says, whenever their creature enters the battlefield under your control, each opponent loses one life. So this is basically the other end of the spectrum. Essentially, when we get our creatures into play, you know, especially our creature token armies, we're going to be draining our opponents for a ton. And then Pious of Angel kind of brings things together in different ways. It says, whenever it and another creature enters the battlefield under your control, you gain one life, and by paying two, we can tap to sacrifice another permanent to transform it. So essentially, the front side cares about creatures coming into play, and it benefits us in that way. But on the back side, we've got Wayward Disciple, which says, whenever it and another creature you control dies, target opponent loses one life, and you gain one life. So again, another fantastic way to drain an opponent for a ton. Speaking of which, there's also Cliffhaven Vampire, which says, whenever you gain life, each opponent loses one life. This can add up a lot throughout the game, especially when we have those other life-gaining effects. 
And then Crab can be absolutely brutal with Defiant Bloodlord. It says whenever you gain life, target opponent loses that much life. So now we can just sacrifice X creatures, draw X cards, gain X life, and make target opponent lose a ton of life. But an even more devastating effect comes with this Copa Guildmage, which has pay one white black. Whenever you gain life this turn, each opponent loses that much life. This can be absolutely devastating and can knock out our opponents incredibly quickly. Speaking of which, we've also got Psychosis Crawler, which has, whenever you draw a card, each opponent loses one life. So Psychosis Crawler doesn't care about us gaining life, but it cares about us drawing cards, which again, Crab can do both. And of course, as always, we can just drain our opponents with something like Grey Merchant of Asphodel, which can also gain us a ton of life too. It has, when it enters the battlefield, each opponent loses X life or X your devotion to black, you gain life, you get a life loss this way. But now that we've talked about ways to punish our opponents, well, let's maybe punish them a bit further. So let's talk about cards like Butcher of Malakir and Martyr's Bond. Butcher Malakir has whenever any other creature you control dies, each opponent sacrifices a creature. Our opponents are going to have a very, very tough time keeping any creature on the board when we can just, you know, sacrifice a ton of creatures, gain a lot of life, draw a bunch of cards, and our opponents have to sacrifice the same number of creatures. And the same is true with Martyr's Bond, which says whenever it or another non-lane permanent you control is put into a graveyard from the battlefield, each opponent sacrifices a permanent that shares a card type with it. Again, with either of these in play in combination with our commander and a couple of creature tokens, it's going to be very difficult for our opponents to do basically anything. But of course, we're also going to be running some target removal and wrath spells with D-Spark, Forsake the Worldly, Oblation, Return to Dust, Crush Contraband, Slash the Rank, Zot Spell, Necrotic X, and Divine Reckoning. But we also have some ways to protect our commanders and our team with cards like Mask of Avacyn, Make a Stand, Root Born Offenses, and Unbreakable Formation. Mask of Avacyn is going to give a creature plus one plus two in Hexproof, and all the other ones basically give our team indestructible on top of doing one other thing. And now that we're going through lists of cards, let's talk about the ramp for this deck with cards like Everflowing Chalice, Ebony Fly, Mindstone, Orzhov Signet, Marble Diamond, Guardian Idol, Liquid Metal Torque, Charcoal Diamond, Fractured Power Stone, and Prismatic Lens. And actually, we do have one more ramp card that can help us out in multiple ways with Crowded Crypt. It's an artifact for a tune of black that can tap to out of black, and it says whenever a creature you control dies, put a corpse counter on Crowded Crypt. By paying for black black and tapping and sacrificing it, we get a 2-2 black zombie creature token with decayed for each corpse counter on Crowded Crypt. That obviously can be a ton of creature tokens coming in when we pop this. But now that we've gone through every single non-link card in this deck, let's talk about the price. And like I mentioned at the start of this episode, this deck is very budget friendly with every single card in the deck outside of the commanders being less than $1. And keep in mind that that estimated cost of $39.77 even includes the cost of basic lands at $0.10 cents a piece, so if you already have those cards, well, there's some extra savings there. And speaking of extra savings, you could potentially save even more by buying this deck on TCG Player and by utilizing heavily played and damaged cards because again, those cards always need a home too. Though, do keep in mind that this estimated cost does not include the cost of shipping, which might vary depending upon your location. And with that, this show is coming to a close, so it's my turn here from you. So in the comments below, let me know what your thoughts on this episode are, and as always, thanks again, and have a good one.